Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalay the Dawn. I remain your host, Chad, if you're 333 and this last match is going to be on Lonely Oasis between Hokomoko and Gaiop. So, without further ado, let's begin. Lonely Oasis, by the way, is another one of those maps that Sprung made a while back that Moose's Loose very kindly went and redid a little bit of the texture work of and grass work and just made it look a lot nicer. I won't fawn over it the same way I did Dead Sonia, but it's worth noting that it is just as worth fawning over. Okay, so back to the game. Guy going for the gunship plant. Pokemoko going for shieldbot factory and a quite forward shieldbot factory at that. Starting out in front of the main area you normally start in is Hokomoko. I guess they figure, well, much like I talked about before with... I guess I have Horus to an extent. It's more applicable on this map that if you take a forward position, it's a little bit harder to defend a bit because you don't have as many ramps. You don't have as much of a defensive position naturally from the terrain. But, if there's something behind it economically, it's usually easier to set up. Except in the case when your opponent is going for air first. This is actually something Gaiop, I'm not sure if they're aware of, but is going to benefit from. If Gaiop goes for a standard rapier assault, but you go around the back and try to just sneak around your opponent's main base, or sneak around the back to your opponent's main base, they're going to end up sneaking around Hokomoko's main base, as the main base is in front of the metal extractors over in the south, in the northwest I don't know my cardinal directions. I think that's made, been made perfectly clear to anyone who's watched my stream for any length of time that I seem to have a hard time with cardinal directions. East is right. Northeast. The northeast starting position, which is not getting attacked in any relevant short order. Why not? This rapier's just sort of sitting there. I don't know if Gaia was planning on going for an early assault or an early rush, but it is going to get scouted out, and I think Hokomoko is going to put a stop to it. Maybe not, though. That being said, Hokomoko should know. I mean... What has happened so far? Really? Gaiop hasn't done anything yet, and it's already two minutes into the game. By now, a glaive or a bandit or maybe a scorcher, if they decided to do that, that should have already arrived in Gaiop's base. Sorry, in Hokomoko's base. Hokomoko, they are probably wondering what the heck's going on briefly, and then going, oh, well, except they're not. No, I'm not sure what they're expecting. See, this is the point in the game. If it's two minutes in and your opponent hasn't sent anything to you... Actually, a minute and a half in, really. It's a minute, minute and a half, and your opponent hasn't sent you anything. If you haven't seen any raiding units, it's usually a good idea. Not always, but... Oh, you know, I just realized... Ah, I have to... Sorry about this. The There's a bit of a technical problem there, but anyway. Dollars to donuts, your opponent is going for air. If they are going for anything to do with that. Like, if they're trying to hide something, if, they're, if they have units that aren't coming to your base, they're probably not building anything non raidy Most people will go for raiders first, even if it's just one or two for scouting purposes. The fact that there are no raiders whatsoever is a pretty clear sign that something's up, especially now that it's three, almost three and a half minutes into the game. Nothing's happened yet. Hokomoko has not set up any raiders. In fact, Hokomoko is just gladly setting up everything. They're going for pretty heavy assaults at least this stage in the game, pretty heavy assaults, but otherwise not doing much, but they don't have any razors up, which I find weird. Like, no razors, no defenders, nothing in the back of their main base. This is very vulnerable. Gaiop is basically playing their game. They, I'm sure they love this. They just need to be careful, because Hokomoko, what is your radar situation? They'll be able to see things coming. Sort of. Gaiop should be able to avoid it by going around this way to some extent. Ah... Oh. Kind of sucks for them. They aren't going around the eastern side. If they went south and then east, they'd be in the best possible position. But as it is, they're not. And Hokomoko, they have a slight economic advantage. They don't have a whole lot in the main base or in the normally main base expansion area. They have a bit more over to the western side. And uh, Hokomoko, I think they were trying to avoid common paths that units travel along. But the sea? Like, no one travels along the sea in this map. Bit of a shame, actually. I think that it is bot pathable. But yeah, I'm pretty sure there are ramps that bots can go down into the water from Amphib. But I'm not actually no, this, that, that can't be right, really. Well, it's questionable. I haven't tested it myself. I don't know for sure if Amphib can go down those ramps. If someone could confirm that. Sprung's probably in jet, actually. No one ever uses Amphib on this map, so it's not a thing that comes up. Anyway, Vandals do are a thing that comes up, because that is what you do. And there's the Razor! 
And this is what I was worried about with Hokomoko, is that they're... I mean, they're not really that well defended. I mean, they didn't set up in advance, but then again, they were fine. Guy up is more of an issue because they didn't attack along the most effective route. Like, Hokomoko was open completely to attack in this area here. That would have been most of Hokomoko's economy. Still would be, actually, but the, the defenses are there. The rapiers can't do anything. If they had attacked along the south, the southeast, south edge, east edge, gone up into the main base, it's not really easy for a guy up to know that. But as a general rule, your opponent isn't like. As a general rule in zero K, expansions are going to happen along a similar level. Like they're going to happen along a similar height. So if there's a plateau that has a bunch of metal extractors, people will usually go for all the metal extractors along that plateau rather than going to metal extractors on a different plateau or a different hill or a different elevation. Typically, people will expand along a, sh a single a single landmass at a constant elevation rather than go to different landmasses that are separated by elevation. In this case, that means that going along the south side and east side, or for the north west, for the northeast player, going along the north side then west side, is the most reliable way to get to your opponent's base through air without your opponent seeing you in advance. Because typically speaking, your opponent is going to expand along the north side or the south side. Because that shares a height. That is a single contiguous landmass at a set elevation. And that's just the psychology of the thing. Most people will do it that way. Even though there actually is a clear ramp. Like, this is actually a direct path in. It's also, it helps a bit that there's a slightly more direct path out of the base. There isn't this turn here. But overall, it's a very direct path here. And I think it's actually closer between these two, between the main base plateau or the regular main base plateau, and the plateau is over in the northwest and southeast than it is to the north and south further expansions. But that is an important psychological component when it comes to figuring out where your opponent is likely to be. Because that is entirely what Jesus is about. Is basically, it's abusing your opponent's psychology. That is how you have to do it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. At this point, Gaia not managing to do so, does switch over to the Hovercraft Factory, which I'm not surprised by, but it does pre present a minor disadvantage, which to some extent explains this setup. It makes it, This setup is very appealing when it comes to any vehicle factory, because with vehicles, this ramp here, this is unpathable. You can't use this. That's purple. Purple means unpathable. I don't know why, but it, it does. So, yeah. Vehicles cannot path along that area. They actually can't path along most of the map. That's... There are ways for them to get onto any plateau, but bots have more readily available ways. Like this plateau here, for vehicles, there's it's almost all purple. For bots, it's this one southern area here that's purple. So it's just not the same. And at this point, Hokomoko has already amassed enough of an economy and certainly enough of an army that Gaiop does not have the forces and is certainly not in position to deal with this. Like this is not a battle they want to fight. That does not do them any good. They're trying to, as best as possible, chip off a little bit of the forces here and there. Make Hokomoko's life a bit more difficult. It's not working. Hokomoko at this point is pretty well set up to just push in and... Or at least to dig in. Maybe not to push. Maybe Kaiop has a bit of time. But Hokomoko definitely can dig in, set up their economy, and... Just have a nice, safe construction. Everything can just be built up, and they don't, have, they don't have to worry about anything. They just go. That being said, they haven't even rebuilt their main metal extract, main base metal extractor, so I'm not sure how much they're planning to dig in or how much they're just planning to try to push forward and wreck everything. I could see them doing either, but it looks like Hokomoko is going for the Western Plateau. Possibly the Eastern Plateau once they get a worker to it, as this convict is approaching it. I would say that is exa exactly what they're doing. Although Gaia, nice move with the maces. Given that Hokomoko at that point had only really gone for bandits, and even with the thugs it's going to be a bit difficult to hold these maces off, it's a very wise choice. Rogues would be the thing to go for, but it doesn't look like Hokomoko is going to go for that. So yeah, Gaia should be in a position to continue holding the center. Like these maces will... Yeah, they're going to wreck that up. The bandits can't do anything. The only problem, of course, is the pathing onto these plateaus. This this is a relatively safe location. There's, other than air, not much that can be done by Gaiop. 
I don't think Guy Up cares, though. I think Guy Up is just going to be setting out as best as they can. I don't know if they realize that this is vehicle unpathable, though. And they're setting up scalpels in a position that makes me think they're planning to go down this hill here. That's not going to happen. This is not vehicle pathable. They're going to have to go all the way around here if they want to go down here. And yep, that's exactly what they were planning on doing, and I guess they didn't check the pathing. This might need to be fixed. I think Lonely Oasis could do with a slight increase in the ramps. I'm making a few more ramps vehicle pathable, because as it is, it just seems inconvenient. It's not very clear that they are vehicle impathable. It's a little clear. Like, you can kind of tell some of the ramps are a bit shallower than others, but not by much. Actually, this map, this adjustment that Moose's Loose did, I find makes it a bit clearer that some of the areas are vehicle impathable. But not completely. Like, this this is a symmetric map. So, for instance, this area here is impassable, but it's better lit. Same with the area over here, actually. It's just not very clear. At any rate, it looks like Guy Up is going to go for the air again. Hope for the best in that regard. At the very least, this is going to work. I, for defenses, at least. The defense is fine. Ooh, never mind. Not just defense. There's the maces over to the eastern side of the map, tearing everything to shreds. If the vandals go down, that is going to open Hokomoko's airspace. I think Guy Up's going to go for a counterattack now. Almost all the vandals have died. The few that remain are not really enough to deal with any rapiers, and there's no razors at all, apart from the main base. Now, of course, Banshees can't do much. Banshees will get wrecked by outlaws. But Rapiers... Man, if Rapiers were rebuilt in force, that would be... That would actually make Guy Up's whole strategy come full circle, and it might work. I still think it'd be an uphill battle. Hokomoko has the economic advantage. Hok Hokomoko almost definitely has a military advantage. The one downside right now for Hokomoko is that they don't have as concentrated of a military advantage as Guy Up does. Guy Up seems to be getting a lot of local military advantages, though this force here is dead. The outlaws have slowed it down to the point that the thugs will be able to deal with it. It's not firing frequently enough. Two scalpels, three, all the scalpels, everything going down. Sca only one scalpel manages to get a shot off and to no avail. So Guy Up just lost their main concentrated force. A secondary force in the main base is still managing to hold off some. But Hokomoko, I don't even know if they're worried about it. They might just decide not to worry about it, not to bother building up vandals. Or maybe they will. I don't... I don't see them building more vandals, so I think they're convinced that felons and outlaws will save the day. Now, uh, it looks like, yeah, Guy Up's sick of the fact that the pathfinding is not clear, or the pathing is not clear. It's not clear what is pathable by vehicles, what is pathable by bots. Which kind of sucks, because I think Gaiop actually had a really good shot. Except for the fact that they didn't realize that this map is not particularly friendly to vehicles. It's less friendly than I thought it was, too. I mean, I realized that this was unpathable, and as well as this, but it just you don't see people go vehicles on this map, so it hadn't quite occurred to me just how bad it was. Because bots can path basically anywhere. There's very little on this map that stops them, I and mean, this cliff stops them, which... Actually, might be a change in the remaster. I don't think it is, though. I think the remaster didn't change the high map at all. But that's the thing. There's, it's just, there's two ramps for bots and one ramp for vehicles. There's this entire area, except for one cliff over to the south or the north on here. One ramp for vehicles. Vehicles just do not work on this map, but it's very subtle that they don't work on this map, because it's still a flat, or at least plateaued map. Normally, those are friendly to all factories. This is an exception. Not sure if that should be fixed, I don't know what Spring's plan was with that, but it is clearly causing problems, at least from a communication perspective. It is not clear. Anyway, bit of a sad note to end things on, or at least slightly disappointing note, but I hope that was still entertaining. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. It was, I think, a fairly solid set of matches. So, for now, though, I will be stopping. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.